All right, I would like to call this meeting of the Economic Development Committee to order. Uh, what I would like to do is um, have you uh, say your name and presence so I can take attendance uh, for the members of the committee. Uh, Mike, Bish, oh, go ahead. <laughs> uh, Mike? Mike Pinch here. All right, April? Uh, all right, April's there. Gary's there. Ron, are you there? Ron Steinhorst, are you there? Tom O'Connell, are you there? They seem to be muted. Lou, is there? Uh, uh, that's why I'm looking. At. Tom should be uh, able to talk. I wonder if he called in. Hold on. Um, no, Tom's on. He's muted. Tell him to hit control alternate A. Okay, he's unmuted now. Good. Very good. Tom's unmuted. All right. Bob Bisa. I'm here. All right. There you go, Tom, uh, Bob. I go to All right. You hear me? Who else do we have from the committee? Who else do we have? Is you you have Bill Bishop. Bill Bishop. Hey, Bill. Hello. Yep. I can hear you, Bill. Can you hear me? I can hear you very clear. Excellent. Who else from the committee? Hans is here. Who? Hans Thompson. Oh, Hans. I'm sorry. <laughs> yep. Anybody else? Uh, Kitty? Yeah, I'm here. Kitty's here. Anybody else? All right. I would like to have someone make a motion to adopt the agenda. I'll make a motion to adopt the agenda. Okay, Mike. Is there a second? I'll second. And who was that? Bill Bishop. Bill Bishop. Okay. If, as you talk, if you'd say your name first, I would help a great deal. Uh, any changes to the agenda? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. All right, next is the January 28th minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. And this is uh, Mike. Mike. Okay, is there a second? Will someone second that motion? Bill Bishop. Bill, thank you. Bill seconds it. Any changes to the minutes? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. <laughs> all right. Uh, we're up to agenda item number four, review the proposed contract regarding the riverfront development project. And there are a couple of different ways that we can go, we, because this could be a very short meeting or a very long meeting. Um, Lou had a a consultant reviewed the questions or the contract and came up with about 30 or 40 questions. Dave, um, Dave and I Fred guess Fog. I'm here. Who's here? Fred Zog. I oh, was here before. Very yeah. good. Thank okay, you. I guess what I'd, what I'm suggesting here is that what I'd like to do is is um, have uh, maybe Gary, Lou, and myself meet with Todd tomorrow or uh, Monday and uh, go through those 30 or 40 rather than try to cover them in the meeting. What I'd like to do is have you folks uh, take your questions and we will take those along uh, with the 30 or 40 other questions that we have. And then we'll sit down with Todd and Gary, Lou, and I will put the uh, I will discuss the contract with him and then uh, maybe come up with a revised contract that will go to the city council meeting on Tuesday night. Um, so I'm hoping that would speed things up. The alternative is that we sit here and go through every one of those questions right now and that could take a couple hours, I'm afraid. 
So does it make sense? Does anyone have an objection uh, I, to the committee recommending that we I think we should just ahead? wait for a bit here. I mean, what, why, did, why does this have to happen right away? It doesn't. The 30 or 40 questions are um, more, a lot of them have a little detail about the way the contract was written, worded, and so it spells things out and that type of thing. And we can go through them if you guys want. So I, um, can I ask a couple questions? Sure. So and how, th that's the intent is that that uh, we would get all your questions. Um, and so when we sit down with Todd, we would include those questions. If Todd can answer those or wants to answer those tonight, we can take care of them tonight. Uh, otherwise, I'd take them along. I'm, I'm just curious how this contract came about. I mean, we didn't talk about it in any other meetings prior to this, and all of a sudden, it's presented to us at this meeting. Is this because of the library or is it for the riverfront or is this for uh, economic development in general or? We had a meeting with uh, Todd. Uh, when was that Todd? Quite a while ago. Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks now, three, three weeks maybe. Yeah, no and just kind of sitting, uh, sitting down and talking about how things were going uh, lack of progress, so forth. And uh, so he came forward with a proposal. He had some suggestions and ideas. And uh, so we said, well, let's present those to the Economic Development Committee, uh, see what you guys think, and kind of go from there. So here we are. So Dave, can I jump in a little bit? Sure, sure. OK, um, just an explanation. Um, maybe a little bit further is that what we've been dealing with is the library project is dealing with a lot of different things. We're talking about a library, we're talking about condo units, about, um, low income senior housing, we're talking about market rate apartments, so forth. The problem is, is that generally speaking, all developers specialize in one thing or another. And trying to get these together as a city is kind of confusing because we don't have the developers, we don't have the backgrounds, um, a lot of different things, and we don't have a lot of developers. And Todd has been involved in numerous projects of all different kinds throughout the state of Wisconsin. Um, and Todd, I don't know if you, if you people know Todd or not, be a former student of mine. He's been in development ever since he got out of high school, and I can't remember the year right now, but it was a few years ago. Um, basically, the need, uh, going to contract with him, basically, as what we might generally describe, but really understand it, is really a project manager plus developer. And he would be able to pull different developers into the project as needed and um, or as an advantage for the city of New London, basically take um, pretty much control of the items from the city of the entire project rather than the city trying to deal with two, three, four possible different developers um, by ourselves. He's got the expertise um, and when Dave and I, when Todd first called and wanted to come up and meet, I met with him. Um, and that afternoon, I called Ann at the library because I wanted to, we were, Dave and I were pretty enthused about the idea of this. And I um, called Ann at the library. Ron happened to be at the library. Todd stopped before we left town, talked with them. They liked the idea. And we've been working on this, finally got, um, I shouldn't say finally, because um, it's been a fairly short time. Our proposed contract with Todd, and that's where we are tonight. Are you uh, speaking of Todd Hutcherson? Yes. Oh, okay, great. Welcome, Todd. Mike, did we answer your questions? Well, I, I guess we that uh, we had those two uh, contractors speak and. Uh, the one we never got, you know, heard anything back from yet. So I wasn't sure if we haven't been presented anything from them or, you know, found out what their uh, 
I guess, proposal was? And that would this be in replacement of that, or is this he just trying to find uh, find somebody to try to develop things? Is that what in in the riverfront? But it also includes the whole community. Is that is that true? Todd, go ahead. Yeah. So um, the way that I I I've, I've been watching this site since uh, I think or before two thousand, right? Um, when the when the lumber yard was there before it got torn down. And, uh, and have seen it kind of languish for a while. And I've actually been in front of the committee, uh, the uh, council two different times uh, for RFPs, made presentations over time. Uh, when this last RFQ came out, I was wondering, um, kind of, it was kind of, I was just trying to figure out where everything was going. It, might, it seems like maybe what's happening is that um, other people are making noise in the background. It might be beneficial if people would mute if they're not talking right now, if you can mute your own screen. Are you having a hard time hearing me, Mike? No, I was having trouble hearing Gary, but I can hear you just fine. Oh, okay. I, I see all the, uh, the boxes keep lighting up and I'm thinking that maybe uh, background noise is affecting how, how I'm coming across. So, but anyway, um, the most recent RFQ came out and I, re I did respond to that, but I said, look, I've, I've been through this a couple of times already. I really don't want to spend a whole lot more time and energy putting together a whole nother plan, a whole nother performa, um, and kind of compete against people for a library that, um, because the way that the, the RFQ was written, was that, you know, tell, tell us what it's going to cost you to do the library. Tell us the time frame that it's going to take you to do the library, uh, other things like that. And I've seen libraries that are in a storefront, you know, quite honestly, in a glorified pool shed. And then I've seen libraries in Milwaukee that are like the Taj Mahal. So to tell a developer, hey, give me a price for a library, you can't really do that and easily compare apples apples when when you're looking at that so you really have to work more with the owner to come up with the scope of work of what they actually want i mean are they looking for a library that's more like in a pole shed or are they looking for the taj mahal and then we can figure out whether or not they can actually afford that things like that so that was where my initial response was just um here's my expertise i can do it but i really think that you have to sit down yeah you have to select who you want to work with that person then has to work with the owner to determine a scope of what the library is going to be, figure out whether or not the community can afford that, and then also make sure that it works in the right place. Now, I understand that the that the city has been working with a couple of got a couple of other proposals in, and so what I my proposal was this time around, and kind of was last time too was just to really act more as an owner's representative, to look out for the, um, the work on behalf of the city to, um, to analyze the different proposals that are coming in and make a recommendation. One of the other things that I've seen through this most recent process is that it seems like there's a disconnect between what the library wants to happen and what the city actually wants to happen. And so I'm, I'm proposing that I will be that go-between person to work between both of the groups to make sure that we're all on the same same page. Um, I also I I don't like the idea of um, you know is, essentially you'll see in my proposal that I'm basically going to get paid if something gets built, right? So that's you know I'm not here asking for a, uh, some money up front, um, and the same with with Chris from Keller Williams in terms of of sales. We're looking for you know, we get paid if we actually produce, we, we eat what we kill. If we don't kill it, we don't eat. So um, I, from that standpoint, I don't really think that there's um, risk to the city other than you're agreeing to, to tie up um, any uh, future proposals that at least will run through me first. Uh, but also the, the contract has, a, I think it's a 30 day, either one of us can get out of it for any reason. Um, so it's also like you're not tied in to me for a long-term uh, period of time. So, but uh, I guess to get back to the to the gist of it is that I, my proposal is to work uh, on behalf of the 
of the um, of the city as an owner's representative to help review the different proposals. So, so the first step is to really review everything that's been out there. So see all the different proposals that have been submitted so far, uh, gather all that information, gather you know how far along did Stab Mueller get with his proposal? What are the actual numbers behind that? You know, work on getting all of that. So that's sort of the, the forensic review of everything that's happened up through today, essentially. And then also at the same time, start marketing along with Chris from Keller Williams, start marketing the site to other people because the site's big enough, first of all, we know it's big enough that the library doesn't take up the whole thing. So there's gonna be other things to be developed on there. So we can start pushing that on, see who else is interested in developing on this site um, and start talking to other developers, start talking to other stakeholders in the community, start talking to some of the local businesses, find out what they want to see happen, find out if they have any ideas for stuff to go on. So to begin that process. And then um, uh, once we've, as we're doing that, then review the proposal that's in front of us right now, which was this the Stabmuller proposal and see if there's any way to, to pick that up, to put those pieces together and make it work, something that the library is gonna be happy with and something that the city will be happy with. And also take a look at this other developer, Grant Fisk, who said that he, he was going to present something, get back in touch with him, find out you know, where he's at, if he still has an interest or if they've lost interest in it. So basically just kind of work as an extension of the staff of the city, because you know, um, you just like larger communities have a community development department, right? Milwaukee, Oshkosh, Nina Menasha, they all have their own economic and community development staff. And obviously New London isn't of the size to have that. Uh, and, and I don't think you have the, personally, I don't think you should have the money to, set, to, to, to pay somebody to do that right now. And so that's kind of what I'm offering is to try and be uh, almost a staff member, although I'm an independent contractor, I wouldn't be an employee, um, but to be an independent contractor to work on behalf of the city to do community and economic development. And how I get paid is if it actually gets done. And if nothing gets done, I don't get paid. If you don't like what I'm doing, you can fire me in 30 days anyway. So that's sort of the proposal in a nutshell, in my mind. Um, I guess, and then in terms of how I'm gonna get paid, uh, my proposal is to get paid based on what gets developed. And so I, in my fee structure, I had 1.5% of the total development cost. So if it's a, a million dollar building, what is, what is that, uh, uh, $15,000? Uh, I think it was a $10 million that was $150,000 if there was $10 million worth of development. So, um, and that would have to get, my fee would somehow have to be built in to the cost of that development. So whether I get paid by the developer or whether the city kicked in some money to help the developer pay that. Um, we would figure that out as we were working on getting those developments done, but that's kind of how my piece of it worked. Now, in, in addition to that, um, I think I needed some, because I'm just a one-man shop. As well, myself and my partner are with Wisconsin Redevelopment, but we're pretty much a one-man shop. We don't have a lot of overhead. Um, so uh, in order to really market this and to um, get this out to the, to the real estate community, I looked to partner with uh, Chris uh, Mokler from Keller Williams. Now I am, uh, in addition to being a licensed architect, um, I'm also a licensed real estate broker and my license right now is associated with Keller Williams. Um, and that's, so that's one of the ways I got to know Chris. Um, Chris focuses only on commercial development he also specializes in working with government uh, government entities. And so I reached out to Chris to see if um, he would be interested in doing this. And in order to make it worthwhile for Chris, um, what we set up, with, Chris said that he would be interested in this, but if he could get the, um, the, uh, the listing essentially for uh, all city of New London properties. So I'm gonna turn this over to Chris and let him explain how his part of it would work. 
Thank you, Todd. You did a, a pretty good job there. Uh, again, my name is Chris Mulkler. I'm with Keller Williams Commercial and Keller Williams Government Services. And uh, the proposal that we brought forward is to be your broker of record to sell uh, any uh, city property for a term of three years. Um, basically, we would start off with the, uh, the library property, the old sawmill property. <clears throat> and there was also some talk of uh, the industrial park sitting a little stagnant. And uh, so, you know, basically we come in as a commercial realtor. We, uh, we know how to market properties. We have developers that we get in touch with. And we would work hand in hand with Todd on this project, uh, working together um, to try to get this done and, and bring some sort of um, construction development to that property and hopefully sell any other property that you wish to sell either to um, you know, monetize some of your assets that might just be sitting there. Um, good time for that as we're going through this COVID-19 crisis. Um, you know, and we can provide other services related to whatever the city might need. Okay. Uh, no, uh, appreciate your input. Uh, let's see, uh, who else has questions? More questions out there? I, I still have a couple, I guess. I don't want to be the one talking the whole time here, but um, Mike again. Um, yep. So is there other people that do uh, what Todd does as well? I mean, and how did we decide that he's doing it versus someone else? Or I'm just asking this because I'm, I'm not sure what the process should be or if someone else should have the opportunity to bid on this as well or, you know, to offer their services or I'm just, just asking that. Um, the reason Todd's involved is because Todd came up and talked to us because he was interested in the project, wanted to get involved. Um, nobody else that um, answered any of the uh, other RFQs um, came up with a proposal such as this at all. It was all just, you know, one thing or another. And um, the other thing is, is a, a contract like this when you're looking at developers or a situation like this, uh, you don't have to bid. Um, particularly, there's no real money involved unless something gets built. Um, so, I mean, th this is just, it, it's up to the committee and up to the council as far as what they want to do. Just a little bit. And this is reference the the letter that Lou sent out, I think it's the four page document that we received. I think it was earlier today. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, I have not had a chance to look at it. Yet. Okay, and the points, uh, those were the, the uh, questions that I was referencing early, earlier. Uh, we just got the, that today and we need to sit down and kind of take a closer look at. It. But those are the questions that I, suggested that um, Gary, I, and Lou would then sit down with Todd, go through the 40 or so questions, and um, hopefully come up with answers. Now, some of those he may want to think about a little bit more. Some of those may have to go back with uh, uh, KW and, and um, get answers from them or whatever. Uh, but we'd go through every one of those bullet points in that memo that you got today uh, with Todd before the council meeting on Tuesday. Well, I, I agree. There, there are some, some of those I'm looking at. Um, some of the things we may want to change the contract slightly. Some we may not. Um, this was done by um, one of our, our lawyers. And uh, they, of course, are looking for, you know, things that are somewhat out of the ordinary or very much in, would benefit the city. And uh, some of them, I'm looking at a couple of them that will have no relevance in this situation at all. Some may, and I think that it would be better off probably rather than each, than going with a big committee such as this, going through point by point of having Lou and I and Dave um, go through these with Todd and, you know, even some of them just may need a little bit more explanation 
and um, go through that rather than do it in a smaller group. And then uh, if we come, if I guess if you like the concept and have enough trust in us to work out a contract with Todd, we could recommend this hopefully to council by next Tuesday. And the reason, Mike, I guess, you know, it seems to be kind of a rush, you know, whatever. We'd like to get this project on track and, and get something as soon as we can. Any other questions? No, I think I, I like the way Gary just, just discussed it. I'd, I'd like to review it. I have not had a chance to review it, but boy, I think if there was a, you know, a smaller group to kind of, you know, pull out some of the, the finite points. And I'm just looking at the first bullet point three, you know, three years and we could pick each one, but I think if somebody, you know, I think it's a great starting point and I think somebody, we should explore it. The ideas mm -hmm. and concepts seem very good. And I guess what, what Gary, I would, Lou, I'm sure would like to do is, is have you, if you, after you review it, uh, if you do have questions, contact one of us and uh, we will make sure that that question gets addressed before uh, it hits, uh, gets to the council. Right. And, and that, that's would, Tuesday? Yes. yes. Okay. And I would, if you could review it as soon as possible, and I would suggest emailing um, myself, Dave, or Lou, um, we're all listed on the, uh, our emails are on the website. Um, if you want to all direct them through me, um, you can do that. It's simply mayor at newlondonwi.org. Uh, and anyone, email is probably the easiest if you've got any real questions or concerns on any aspects of this. Are there any other questions? Comments. Going once, going twice. Maybe we ha uh, maybe we should have a motion, uh, kind of to that effect, since it's on the agenda to review it. Uh, that that. Uh, Gary, uh, the mayor, the, the uh, uh, chair, and uh, city administrator review the contract with Todd and present it to the council on Tuesday. Uh, what's the date? Uh, April 13th. Is there a motion to that effect? Do you, do you think we should uh, present it to us first with the changes to see what we think before we go to council or do you think you go right to council? Well, to speed things up, I was suggesting going right to council. Uh, if we have a, another meeting in between, so we'll throw things back a month. I'm just, I'm just asking, I don't know what other people's yep. opinions are. Yep. Is that, you all folks would all, uh, uh, all do have a chance to uh, email us with your questions or concerns. And I think if we come up with a proposed council or a proposed agreement, um, we can email it out to everybody for maybe a fairly quick review. Hopefully we get it done by Monday afternoon, get it out to you, um, you know, before the council meeting on Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to definitely see that prior to the meeting, if we could, please. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And the council would be getting it as well. So you as a member of the council, Mike, would get it that right. way too. Is there uh, a, anyone? Uh, this is Ann. Yep. Can I make a suggestion that somebody from the library be in on that conversation tomorrow since uh, there's a point in there to make a separate contract with the library? Yes, can Todd, can you uh, expand on that? Because uh, Ron Steinhorst also, raised that question with me earlier in the day today. Uh, the separate contract with the library, what's all that about? Well, and it wouldn't have to be, but my understanding was that the library, once the library decides to move ahead and the city agrees 
on the site with the library. Then the library building itself uh, is going to be owned by the library board, or am I incorrect about that? Is the library going to be owned by the city? That's a fine detail. I mean, the, the library board technically owns the library, but it's a city library, so the, the funding comes from the city. Okay. I mean, it's a technicality that the library board owns it. Okay, well, I, and I, that was part of just me not understanding how the structure worked. If, if the city is going to be making the decisions, essentially, in terms of as an, as an owner of the building, uh, I guess with library board input then, um, then I, you know, this contract could suffice because it, it would work that way. I was just thinking if the library basically developed it themselves, that really, uh, because I would at that point be working directly for the library and not really for the city anymore, uh, we would need a separate library contract. But if it's still going to be a joint ownership situation, uh, I guess we could suffice with just one contract. I think joint is the best way to go. And um, if that's the case, I mean, Ann did um, send me an email um, a day or two ago, or I guess it was on Friday, um, that I responded to over the weekend that maybe has more detail about what, because um, she had some more specific questions um, about what specifically would be done. And maybe that would be actually helpful to share with the, because Ann just asked it, um, I just responded to her and Ron. Um, but if, if it's gonna be with the library, maybe that would be helpful to share with, the, with this committee in turn. It kind of breaks down more of what I would be doing once a project gets started. Um, I think it has a lot more detail to it. So, Ann, if you're okay, maybe I forward that or you forward that to the, to the committee as well. Good idea. I think Ann's on mute right now. But. The host Ann? muted me, so I can't seem to talk. <laughs> now, now you're talking. You're talking now. Okay. So, I, I got muted, but I'm sure I'd, I'd be happy to share that. Okay. And did you have any other concerns, Ann, around uh, your question? Yeah. Can you hear me? Tom, yeah, ahead, yep, Tom. we can hear you. Go ahead. And I had a question on, they talked before the West End was kind of wet and we're going to have to fill down there. Is there any more talk about that, Ben? Um, we have no idea until we get moving with the project. Okay. And uh, as far as the other funding, there's got to be some bonding done by the city to build us. Not, it's not going to be bonded by the library board. It's going to be bonded by the city. That's all I got to say. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Hey, hey, Any other comments? Yep. Is there, any, is there an intention for this group to meet again at its regularly scheduled time at the end of April? Yes. Is yes. there a way that, that, I mean, it's only a couple weeks away, and so it wouldn't push it back that far if we had another chance to discuss this as a group, review it. it I mean, I would still encourage the three or four of you to still sit down with Todd and Chris, but in the meantime, we also have a little bit of time to sort of digest all of this. And then you might have some more information from us. Todd and Chris might be able to come again, have some more information for us. I mean, it just feels, it feels a little bit rushed for us to see this today on Thursday night and then it's going to be put in front of the council on Tuesday. There hasn't been any competition in terms of any other people who've been involved in the process. And I'm not saying that there's anything untoward going on here, but I just feel like it would be nice to have a week or two to look this over, 
get our thoughts collected. If we're meeting again at the end of April, it's really not that much of a delay. And uh, that would be my proposal. Okay, thanks, Hans. I kind of agree there. I was on that cemetery committee. You remember that, Dave? And it yeah, took us yep. two, two meetings to get through our contract and iron out the, you know, the details. And there's quite a few bullet points here that need to be discussed. And I just feel like we could, you know, maybe spend a little more time to make sure we're doing it right. That's just, that's my opinion as well. Yep. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a question right. right now for Todd, if, if possible. Go ahead. Hey, Todd, one of the things that we ran into here with Randy was that he was also kind of a one-man shop. And when he ran into the health issues that he experienced, it left us in the city in the lurch, uh, so to speak. And so I, I know you spoke of the fact that you have a partner that you work with. And so I guess one question I have is, what would the partner's role be in the process from the start? And if God forbid something happened. What is what is the redundancy there? I think that's why Chris is on board with us. You know, Chris is going to be uh, Chris and I are going to be communicating on this um, uh, right from the start and ongoing and and all the way through it. So Chris is going to be very familiar with everything that's going on. And if uh, if there's an issue with me, uh, COVID or otherwise. Uh, Chris will be able to step in and, and take over. So, and Chris has a has a large staff, and um, he'll be able to to take. I, I'm sure he'll be able to fill in uh, if something happens to me. So that would be my answer there. And just to add to my answer, you know, I have several associates and a team of government services people scattered throughout the United States that would be able to step in and help if need be. Um, God forbid. Okay, um, thanks. I'd like to ask one question. Uh, Todd, what's your experience building libraries? No, I don't have any experience so building libraries. library. You have the same level as the two developers we've already went out and talked to. Yes. Okay. Sounds like it. Uh, hmm. Sounds like it. So, I mean, I don't know if people, I don't know if people have, have been able to review my resume that was put out before in the different projects that I've worked on. Um, you know, the bulk of, and I'm totally honest, the bulk of what I've done is develop uh, tax credit housing, multifamily tax credit housing. A lot of it has uh, a mixed use component to it, so it'll have other things. The most recent project that I just finished is was a 200,000 square foot uh, former Nunbush Shoe Factory in Milwaukee. We converted to 59 apartments, underground parking in the, in the lower level, and about 40,000 square feet of office space. Um, so that's, you know, that's a $20 million project that we finished up within the last year or so. Um, so that's the most recent one, but I've got a, a wide variety of, of projects similar to that. These are all very complicated projects that all use historic tax credits, affordable housing tax credits, TIF, um, uh, environmental grants, WIDA grants, um, uh, bonds on this last deal. Um, so they all have um, you know, uh, real complicated levels of, of financing, uh, layers of financing that go into them. So even though I haven't specifically built a library building, um, the process is pretty, much the same on, on all of, on any building, any building. Um, and I've got, you know, I, like I said, I, I graduated, from, maybe I didn't say it, but I graduated from UW-Milwaukee uh, School of Architecture like in 1989. Um, and I, I am a licensed architect. I've been doing uh, real estate development and construction uh, ever since that time. Um, so I have experience in building buildings and, de and developing. I mean, I started out as an architect and a design build small general contracting company doing that type of work. And after about six years, moved into real estate development. And since that time, I've been in development ever since. And development is really about just uh, coordinating all of the different entities that have to get involved in a real estate project to get to the, to the end point and get everybody sitting around the table and nod their head yes, the exact same moment, so you actually have a project. And that involves 
the city um, zoning, the environmental, the DNR, the, the architects, the uh, engineers, the finance people, the, um, the lawyers, everybody has to get together. And that's what I've been doing for the last 25 years. So that's what I'm hoping to bring to this. Now, um, there are other groups that have built libra libraries and perhaps, you know, that's one of my jobs is to go out and try and find one of those groups as well if this other one falls through or isn't working, you know? Um, so, but that's what I see my job is, is bringing the people together and the expertise together to get this done. I'm not saying that I'm the guy that's gonna do it. I'm saying I'm the guy that's gonna find the people that's gonna get it done, okay? And so that's where, you know, bringing Chris in or bringing whoever I think needs to, we need at that moment, I'm gonna go out and try and find them and bring them in to get the deal done. So that, that's what my role is. Okay, uh, any other comments or questions? Well, one question, I if it's possible, if we could get the questions before the meeting so that we can review them and maybe be a little better prepared to, to answer mm -hmm. for you. Sure. Is that sure. possible? Okay. So is there any motion on the floor? I move to have a small group of people in the city of Lou, Gary, Dave, and representative of the library meet with Todd and Chris to review the contract. And that review would be based around the attorney's review previously conducted. And at the same time, we would have we, the committee, would have the opportunity to receive an update as well as an opportunity to ask additional questions at the next regularly scheduled meeting. Of the Economic Development Committee. Correct. Okay. I second that. Is there a second to that? Mike seconds that? Yes. Is there any further discussion? Steve, it looks like somebody is trying to talk. Um, I don't know who that number is. Um, um, 982, are they trying to talk, trying to say something? We can't hear them. Uh, 982 7774. That's me. <laughs> well, that's oh, you. Yeah. Oh, I can yeah. see you. I can see you, and I can. Okay, gotcha. All right. Yeah, now, that's, he's on the talk. phone. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm on both the phone and the computer, and I really should have shut the computer off, but I enjoy watching you folks. So I left the computer on. Okay. I was going to bring my dog up to the monitor so you could see her, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are, are there any other questions or comments on the, on the motion? Yeah. On this um, type of project, I don't know what you call it. Is it a type of bid bond? If the developer doesn't make it, they, the, the bonding company pays it. Todd, can you comment on Saying if there's there's a bid bond, or, or the company would be bonded, um, I think normally the developer typically isn't bonded, but the construction companies normally are, and so the construction companies would get a get a bond uh, from a bonding agency, and if they don't uh, complete the project, the bonding agency can step in um, to uh, to finish things off. But that would be on the construction side of things. Right. All right. Any other questions? I got one more. Not that I like to be talking tonight, but would there be a chance that Todd would do his job so well that it could cause problems with us, like with having a downtown revitalization happening in the next few years and Mill Street and all the you know monies that are going to have to come out for that? Would there be a chance that if all of a sudden like he hit five home runs that that could cause uh, financial problems for the community, or I'm, I'm just asking. Yep, no, it's a good question, Mike. And one of the issues that we'll have to consider as a council is um, uh, our borrowing capacity limits and so forth, and which projects we can take on and how much money we can afford. And Todd would have to be involved in that discussion. 
And also, let's not forget with that, that we just got a $2.94 million grant for the North Water Street construction. Right. So, which is going to cover about, what, 90% of the cost of that downtown uh, project. So we're, fortunately, that's a biggie. Okay, any other questions or comments? All right, if not, then all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right, good. Um, so we'll move forward then. Um, the next item on the agenda, and uh, thank you, Todd, for your participation. We'll be getting in touch with you. In fact, maybe before you leave, Todd, are you going to be around tomorrow? Yes, I, I am. Chris, are you are you available tomorrow? Uh, is Chris, can Chris unmute? There we go. It took me a second to get unmuted. Uh, I'm available. Um, I'm busy in the morning, but I'm available all afternoon, one o'clock on. Afternoon. Gary and Lou, are you available tomorrow afternoon? Um, my calendar right now. Yes, I'll be available. Yeah, okay. I'm available. Could we uh, set me around one o'clock or so? Yes. Yes. Actually, can uh, we do that at one thirty by chance? I just realized. Sure, like one thirty would be fine. Sure. One thirty, okay. Luke, can you kind of set up the uh, telephone calls again? <laughs> yeah, not a problem. Would I do it? Yeah. Okay. Not good. a problem. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda then, uh, number five, economic development goals. And what mm -hmm. I'm requesting here is uh, maybe to have Lou. Uh, for the next meeting, prepare a document analysis of the goals and where we stand, what has been accomplished on those goals. This is all, Lou, this would also be good input for your performance appraisal coming up uh, in a couple of months. Yeah. Uh, but what we'd like to see is, is a documented uh, uh, kind of analysis <laughs> of the goals for each goal, uh, what we have accomplished, what we did, and so forth. Okay. Does it make sense? Sounds good to me. All right. Any questions on the goals from the committees? You you didn't have anything to look at tonight. And that's why I want uh, for the next meeting, uh, you'll get a list of the goals plus what's been accomplished. But is there any other questions or comments on the goals? Would there uh, be any issues uh, because of the coronavirus with some of those being completed or... I mean, well, uh, right. Uh, they may have affected some of the goals, and, and Lou can um, add those comments in there where things haven't started because of the virus or yeah. whatever. But that'd be part of the analysis. Any other comments? Questions? All right, moving on to item number six updates and reports. Uh, April? Hello. <laughs> I can imagine with the virus, um, business update is, is very frail, frail, and I think um, it's only getting worse at this point. Um, we have just under 250 chamber members right now, and of that, 170 of them provide some sort of service, professional or retail. And we have about 60 non-essential businesses with their doors closed right now, and that's just chamber members. Um, so that's all your specialty shops, your salons, your recreation and entertainment. Um, all of our food establishments in New London are continuing that curbside or delivery service, um, except for Bucky's. Um, but I've been informed that the majority of them are struggling. It's hard for them to forecast payroll, supplies, and um, their service is dwindling. It was, it was exciting at first and, and they're seeing service dwindle. Um, as far as a commercial update, we have a couple buildings that went on the market. The former Huntington Bank went back on the market. The Curves building over by Walmart, the business and the building are for sale. And then I just talked to Gary Roan last night, uh, Radke Roan, the entire building is up for sale. And it looks like Copper Shot was sold. I'm not sure who purchased it though. 
um, 33 chambers in Wisconsin, along with 18 businesses, sent a letter to our governor today calling upon um, his administration to put in some sort of structured plan to reopen the state April 24th. So we are waiting to hear back from that. Okay, that's it, April. Mm-hmm. Any questions for April? I don't have a question, but I have a, a something worth mentioning. We uh, April mentioned that many institutions right now are are challenged with um, forecasting payroll, and and if there's anything that we can do to um, to help promote people to know that there's there are resources out there. Um, many of the institute financials in town are working diligently around the clock for um, this paycheck uh, protection program. And we just need to make sure that every institution um, or every business is aware of it. Just send them to there. If they, if, you know, even if it's a small business, make sure they go visit their institution and start with their institution where they have their banking. I would agree with Bill. Um, the chamber, as a chamber, we've been advertising. It doesn't matter if you're a member or not. If you have a question about financing or where to start, please come to us so that we can point you in the right direction. We've updated our website to have all COVID-19 resources. Uh, we have a call every single week with a recovery team and we're, we've been inviting different guests on that can um, share with the team on how we can educate our businesses in our community. And same here. Sure. Um, uh, sorry, uh, whenever I get a call, um, I usually send them over to April, David Thiel. Uh, I've been sending them to the banks. I mean, there's a lot of programs out there. Uh, Absolutely. We've been trying to spread that information out as wide as we can. I just had a call about an hour, uh, about 3 o'clock, 3.30, and did the same thing. Send them on to uh, David Thiel, and, and he's been working with all the banks. Um yeah, we're, we're trying to do everything we can. I know our small part here in the office is uh, we've been uh, occasionally ordering lunch from one location at a time and rotating that so that we can try to get as much, uh, well, help out as much as we can. It's the little things that help out at times. In the last three days, our team sat down. We have 250 members and we contacted every single one of them by phone. And if they didn't pick up their phone, we emailed them check in, um, see if there's anything else that we can do for them, make sure that they're aware of all the funding resources out there right now, and um, just to see if there's anything that we can do for them. So we want them to know and that not, we're in it together. And not only the funding sources, many institutions are running things on their own in conjunction with what maybe the SBA is running. Many institutions have added benefits and it's important to know that some of these are changing. Um, the SBA has made many, many updates, so continually stay, stay fresh with, with your institution. Very good. Appreciate the comments. Any other questions for April or Bill? Mm -hmm. I guess. All right. I am. Go ahead. Who's going to be considered the contractor here? Todd or? And then those other guys that we talked about with the bonds would be, gen um, he'd be the general contractor then, right? Kind of the general contractor, right, Tom? Yep. Okay, administrator update, Lou? Uh, besides what uh, April and, uh, well, what we've just been talking about, uh, Bizarre After Dark, um, that's been pushed back. Uh, we're looking at sometime maybe September or uh, August, September, but we'll have a more of a confirmed date once this uh, COVID uh, pandemic has settled down. Um, other than that, uh, you know, as, as you can probably tell, um, in February, I had gone out and started meeting quite a few businesses. After we've had to lock our doors, it's been kind of crazy just in the city office trying to keep up on all the policy changes, which they changed yet another one today. So I've got to get going on that as well. Um, but that's all I've got. Uh, the the WIDA program that we started up uh, was well, they're extending our deadline, um, our end date, because uh, they they asked me and I said you, you know you're probably right. Now is not a time to be sending out uh, a bunch of emails and letters asking 
uh, businesses if they want to move here when they're worried about whether or not they're even going to keep their doors open. So we put just a temporary hiatus and we'll be starting that up again, um, hopefully at the end of April, beginning of May. That'll be included in my report, by the way. Okay, very good. Anything else, Lou? Uh, that's all I've got right now. Okay, thank you. All right, then uh, you also have in your downtown uh, re revitalization committee minutes from February 19th that took place. And this is, I guess that's about it. Are there any uh, questions or comments before we adjourn? I actually thought uh, the uh, paintings look kind of cool so far that they've done. I thought they looked pretty nice. Which uh, painting? They have some down by the Dairy Queen, and I mean, they started doing a little bit already, so. Oh, yes, yes, good. yep, good point. Dave, can I make a suggestion? Yes. Would it be possible for the city to also add a COVID-19 resource link to your website for the public? Yes, we could. Yeah, I, th I thought it was already there, but yes, I'll. Okay. we can make that happen. Awesome. Good suggestion, April. Uh, any other comments, questions? Move to adjourn. Tom moves to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Mike seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you all. Thank uh, you. Unfortunately, fortunately, we do have some technical issues from time to time, but uh, I'm afraid this is where you'll probably be doing uh, meetings uh, for a while. So. <laughs>